last story, which is a very sad story. Headline, Keith Ratliff dead. FPS Russia YouTube channel producers shot in apparent homicide, Georgia police say. Now let's take a look. A producer behind a popular gun enthusiast channel was found dead with a single gunshot wound to the head at his business last week. Now, for you guys who don't know, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, you probably do know about FPS Russia, which, in my opinion, is the best show on YouTube, hands down. I'm not just saying this because we're covering the story. I think it's the best show on YouTube. Uh, and the producer of the show was ch found shot dead. Bullets in the back of his head. Alex Jones had a special report. You can look more into that. Uh, he, he'll break it down in more detail. But uh, it's a very sad case. Um, I don't believe it says it in this particular article, but I've seen other reports where they said the guy was bound. He had firearms in his arm, excuse me, firearms in his home, some of which had been customly modified, and you know he was found dead in his home. And many gun grabbers will say, "Well, this guy had all these guns, and they didn't protect him." Well, all the guns don't always protect the military. All the guns don't always protect the police, but it doesn't mean that you don't have a right to own such a firearm. And in Mr. Ratliff's case, there's speculation maybe he knew. Uh, the perpetrator, or maybe he was ambushed. You know, there's a lot of speculation. I definitely don't want to uh, sour that with any uh, with any speculation. But it's a very uh, very sad thing to see. Uh, I'd like to see uh, FPS uh, the guy. I believe the main guy's the host's name is Dimitri. I'd like to see him continue on and make his videos. And I'd like to talk to him right here on the Infowars Nightly News. I definitely respect his time and in his morning. I'm not going to press the issue, but you know, he's definitely welcome on the show uh, when he gets some gets some time. So, you yeah, know, that's what it is. Uh, and we have this clip from Doug Hagman, who uh, I believe this clip is from 2011. Doug Hagman, uh, a guest on our show, says he has a high ranking source that people in media, especially those who promote things such as uh, gun activism, would be targeted. So let's take a look at this clip from Doug Hagman. My source told me pretty much exactly what their plans are and what their contingency, contingency plans are. They've got uh, plan A, B, C, and D, uh, whereas one of my sources uh, calls that a no single point failure. So they're going to come at us on multiple levels. It's just not going to be the legislative level. It's going to be through executive orders, through global initiatives, through health initiatives. It's really an insidious situation. But the president is going to act. There are executive orders, executive action that can be taken. We haven't decided what that is yet. And they're not only coming after the guns, Alex. They're coming after the mouthpieces. They're coming after the Alex Joneses of, of the world and, and Doug Hagman's and, and others who speak the truth. But tonight, I'll go head to head with a man who actually wants to deport me for having these very views. They are going to marginalize us before they take us down. They're going to make us look foolish, to make us look like fools on the Internet before they, they pull the plug, obviously. Now, the two men debated gun control. I'm not 100% sure, but I think Alex was the one who took the pro-gun position. And I'm here to tell you, 1776 will commence again if you try to take off firearms. We will not relinquish them. Do you understand? Stalin took the guns. Mao took the guns. Holy <laughs> No one's taking away all the guns. According to my source, the very first people to be rounded up, the very first targets, if you will, on the radar of this regime are the people that are speaking the truth about what's taking place. Alex Jones, Doug Hagman, others like us who are getting to the heart of the matter. We are the targets for not only the censorship, but for what's coming after that, what's coming after that is the actual uh, uh, the, the physical part of it to take us out of the fight before it really begins. Challenge Alex Jones to a boxing match, show up with a semi-automatic that you got <laughs> legally, and pop him. I'd love to see that. <laughs> In uniform. <laughs> Very interesting, Doug Hagman. And if you'd like to see more of that, full interviews, full archives, check out PrisonPlanet.tv. Now, before we end this segment, I was running on the treadmill this morning. And I saw something that caught my attention. I'm sure many of you, you guys have seen the uh, Demand a Plan video with all the celebrities in it. And we here at InfoWars made our own Demand a Real Plan video, which in my opinion is better, but whatever. They beat us to the punch. They got the, the originality thing working for them. But uh, one of the stars in the piece is one named Jeremy Renner. 
Uh, he was in the last Born movie. You guys may know him as Hawkeye from the Avengers. And my question to these celebrities was, I'm not saying he did this as a direct uh, reaction to what I said, but I made a video with Melissa Melton where I challenged these celebrities to come out and tell what people what their plan really was. Because uh, a lot of people jumped a gun and they said, oh, celebrities for gun control and this and that. And my thing was like, what, what is your plan? I was, I was curious to see. So one guy stepped to, up to the bat, Jeremy Renner, Hawkeye from the Avengers movie. And uh, he had the clip. I, we couldn't find the clip. I was busy working on some other stuff this morning. I couldn't find the clip. But he basically said he himself is a proud gun owner. He's not trying to take guns away from anybody. Uh, now, I didn't get to see a full explanation. He may be for different types of gun control. I'm not saying he is or he isn't. But I definitely respect Jeremy Renner for stepping up to the plate, especially on such a hot, hot issue, and saying he doesn't want people disarmed. But I guess he does think uh, some type of regulation is necessary. And so, I mean, I'm, will, I'm willing, willing to hear somebody like that out. Now, on the flip side of that, I was also watching TV, and I saw one Arnold Schwarzenegger. Now, you guys probably seen the hypocrisy video when they show all these clips. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger wasn't in the demand video, but they show all these mashup clips of these celebrities saying Columbine. They show them, you know, oozing down a, you know, a whatever, a bank, you know, whatever. But uh, when Arnold Schwarzenegger was on there talking about, no surprise, he doesn't think that uh, violent movies encourage violent behavior. And I do agree with that. I don't believe that uh, playing violent video games or watching violent movies makes you a violent person. But I think, you know, to get up there and make it something like a demand video and say that uh, we need to ban guns while you, you know, shoot people in movies is pretty, uh, uh, <laughs> is pretty goofy. But uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger said, if we can throw that article back up, he blamed violent video games for violence, but not violent movies. So you see, so he tried to, well, I think he did ban violent video games, or at least put some restrictions on them while he was the governor, but violent movies are okay. So uh, no violent video games, but violent movies. But as this article points out, when he got back on the acting scene, he said violent video games are, I guess, okay, because he can make money off of them going back to the Terminator series. So here we go. They're bad. Violent video games are bad. Uh, violent movies are fine. But when he becomes, you know, goes back to the acting scene, can make mo money off of video games, now violent video games are A-OK. -okay. So, oh, Schwarzenegger, man, what is, what is up with that? So anyway, I just want to point that out. So uh, big up to you, Jeremy Renner, and I don't know what your deal is, Schwarzenegger. I'm not saying I'll never see another Schwarzenegger film again, but that's, that's, I hated to see that. Anyway, so let's go now to our quote of the day. This is from Machiavelli. That, that is such a hard word, Machiavelli. All right. When you disarm the people, you commence to offend and show that you distrust them either through cowardice or lack of confidence. And both of these opinions generate hatred. So there you go. There's our quote of the day. I forgot to uh, I had a special quote I wanted to do today, but I forgot to get it in in time. So maybe next week. So anyway, that's it for this segment. We'll be back in our next segment. I had a chance to sit down with Alex Jones on the Alex Jones radio show, the man himself, the guy, for all, all you new listeners, this is the guy you've been hearing all about, Alex Jones. I was on his radio show today talking about Glenn Beck and some comments he made. Uh, so we'll show you that in the next segment. But once again, if you like what you see here, check out prisonplanet.tv. Go there. We have a lot of great stuff going on. You can get a 15-day free trial as well as many other things. You can check out the movies, the rant section, the special reports. Ah, oh, there he is right there holding that vicious... That vicious uh, AR-15 that may be a Bushmaster, I don't know if it is or not, shooting your Bill of Rights, even though it came out that the guy most likely left his uh, assault rifle in the car and actually used handguns for the, uh, for the massacre. But they don't want to talk about that. Just like when I was watching the Pierce Morgan show last night, they completely skipped over the fact that James Holmes, as well as finding booby traps in his home, they also found a whole lot of prescription drugs. But you can't talk about prescription drugs on CNN. They get too much back and forth. But you've got to heard all these wild accusations. Alex Jones believes in this. Alex Jones believes in, believes in that. Alex Jones believes that Oklahoma City was a false flag. Well, there is a little bit of truth of that. So I want all of our new viewers especially to go to, uh, if you have a su subscription, go to prisonplan.tv. But if you don't, go to uh, the InfoWars shop where we have this film right there. You see on your screen a noble lie. It talks about o the Oklahoma City bombing. And it's going to give you some stuff you've probably never heard of, some things you never will hear on CNN unless somebody like Alex Jones is on there to talk about it. So go there and get some good information. 
Now, I want people to be aware of this. I'm from the state of Oklahoma, and I don't believe the official story of the Oklahoma City bombing. And I'll just end with this, with this short factoid that you can find right here in A Noble Life. The official Oklahoma City bombing story says that neither Timothy McVeigh nor Terry Nichols ever entered the Murrah building. Now, keep that in mind. The governor, the then governor of Oklahoma, Frank Keating, this isn't some conspiracy theory. This isn't a reporter. This isn't some conspiracy theory. This isn't Jakari Jackson. This isn't Alex Jones. The then governor of Oklahoma, Frank Keating, said that bombs were found inside the Murrah building. I'm not talking about fragments of the original Ryder truck bomb, fully intact, uh, ready to use ordinance found inside that building. So let's use our common sense, which they, which they don't like to use on those other networks. If the two people convicted of the crime never entered the building, how did those bombs get there? That's not me saying that. That's the governor, Frank Keating, the then governor of Oklahoma, saying that they're in there. So even if it was somebody operating completely, uh, completely uh, against the other two guys, somebody else got in there and put bombs in there. So there's at least one other person that has not been pursued. And why isn't that coming out? So that's just a little factoid for all these people. They want to talk about Alex Jones believes Oklahoma City is a false flag. They don't want to tell you why. So that's why. That's, that's just one, one of many reasons you'll find in this. So check it out. It's a good, uh, it's a good piece. Christy Hightower here with a quick Planet and Fours update. Good to see you all, Patriots, again. Uh, you're still talking on the site, and we're still listening. And I just wanted to give you a quick little um, intro, I guess. There's a letter to peers. Obviously, as you've all known, it's all across the media. Everyone's talking about Alex's V. v Pierce. Uh, somebody wrote a letter to peers, and it, it goes something like, I was glad to see you maintain the famous Brit civility. That was refreshing. Now, before everybody overreacts, he goes on to say, fact remains, the dictatorship that is being imposed is by no means civil. When countries are taken over by dictators, good people die. So go and finish reading that. I, I found it really interesting because when it first when I first started reading it, that first sentence kind of made me mad. I think Piers is a, a you know, British, he, he ran away from some bad stuff, so he really shouldn't even be here, in my opinion. But then he goes on to just explain, like, hey, Piers, you're, you're taking in on a one side, so go and read it, uh, leave your comments below, and uh, I'll look forward to reading those. And the next two things I just wanted to give you an update about, we have two different missions. Now, all of the groups on the site, I'm sure, have their own missions, but we have one for the Dating Freedom Lovers with uh, February 14th coming up. Obviously, um, we want to make sure you guys find love or maybe have the option at least. So th these two people, Eric and Samantha, uh, are doing really well. I've been in touch with them. And what we're going to start doing is if you send us your picture and a quick little bio, now obviously nothing too vulgar, you know, like, come on, keep it decent, but uh, if you send us your picture and a little bio, we're going to feature you in that top section where you just saw their picture. And if we get enough of them, we'll trade them out like every day or even every hour if we have that many. So just send them on in and uh, we'll post those up. That's one mission. You can find that in the Dating Freedom Lovers group. And the second mission I actually am super excited about because, as you know, we have the InfoWars magazine, and we have just been able to get them on to Prison Plan, or I'm sorry, onto Planet InfoWars. And they have their own group. It's called InfoWars Art, and you just type that in the search bar. And the mission is actually a Twitter chat session. So that's going to take place Thursday, January 10th, that'll be tomorrow, from 2 to 3 p.m. Central Time. And all you have to do to participate, just get on Twitter and use the hashtag, uh, which is the pound sign, IWChats, plural. And just add that to whatever you're saying. We're going to be discussing this month's magazine, the January issue of 2013, the year America dies. So get on there, talk about the things that disturb you the most. For me personally, it's the NDAA indefinite detention of American citizens, anyone that they associate with terrorists, and they haven't even designed, does, uh, said exactly what a terrorist is. They just kind of leave it, leave it vague. So uh, get on there, talk to us. We'll be on there for an hour. It's actually going to be the graphics team 
And we're really fortunate, our featured artist, Anthony Frieda, is actually going to join us in that chat session from his Twitter stream. So if you have questions about any of his art or how he got to do it, get on there, ask. So um, we hope to see you guys again. Uh, Patriots, y'all are talking, and again, we're listening. Thank you for all you're doing.